So the idea with, with these recordings and this video here is to try to give you a, a alternative angle to learn to program. So there's of course the theoretical kind of hardcore way, learn everything from the top, and then there's also the playful creative way. And uh, in this one, we want to kind of compress the creativity down to one core concept, which is to learn to program a basic game. So this is a video that is hopefully going to last 15-20 minutes. That depends on how long time it takes for me to program the game. But the game I'm going to play, uh, program is Pong, the classic uh, game with the paddles, the two paddles going up and down, and the ball between it. And I'm going to use that game as an excuse to introduce you guys to processing and some of the core concepts. And it's going to be a little bit speed programming. And the beautiful part here is that you can just pause the video whenever you want to and go back and forth and see the details in it. So, core a basic introduction to processing with the Pong as a, our theme here. Old arcade game. So, this is processing. The processing kind of interface, a programming interface. And the, the first thing we need to, to have in this is uh, actually a ball, somehow a playing field and a ball. So I can write, write ball or I can write ellipse. See, processing doesn't know what a ball is, but it knows how to draw an ellipse. If it wants to compile, there it is. And uh, now we have a ball in our little pong game, but it's, it's kind of uh, the only thing we have right now. So we can see the background is kind of not black as it should be and there's this border around it and we, we're missing the paddle and and the area is kind of uh, small so we can add some more stuff to it we can add a, a size 800 times 600 which is an old screen resolution actually high resolution pong compared to the original pong game so now we have a little bit bigger playing field here and we can add a background to it and we can say the background should be zero that's black and now we have a black background so what does all this do yes yeah, so as you can see here our processing is basically some commands we have the size of the screen and we say it's 800 that means it's 800 in that length and it's 600 in the height and we have a background and it's zero that means it's black and we have an ellipse which is placed at 2020 so this is zero zero in the coordinate system so we start from above and go down instead of uh, what we're used to where zero zero is here from the school and uh, then goes down so like 2020 will be 20 down and 20 in or 20 in first and then 20 down so we'll be right here in the center spot here will be 2020 so if i change this to 50 for an example that means we're going 50 in and 20 down so we are a little further in here and of course I can change the size of this so I can say all right I want a bigger ball so I'm gonna have 50 50 this is width and height of the ball so now it's a bigger ball and the syntax is basically the comma means this is one parameter this is the other parameter x and y width of the ball and height of the ball so we can also make an actual ellipse by having different widths and heights, like this. All right, so if you don't know the syntax for something, the easiest way to get it is to double click the, the word you're looking for, right click and say find in reference. And then processing has a kind of a locally stored, uh, if it can open it here, locally stored uh, reference where you can see ellipse and then you can see the different parameters. So the A parameter is the X coordinate, the B, coordinate, the B parameter is the Y coordinate and so forth and so forth. All right, so back to programming here. The first thing is we want to make this interactive. This is a game, we want the ball to float around on the screen and right now it's very stationary, it's not moving at all. Oh, I'm still doing the ellipse thing like that. Now it's more like a ball. And, uh, but it's not uh, really kind of bouncing around, so we cannot, it's not interactive. So the question is, how do we make something interactive? Well, basically when we have it like this, as a simple setup here, we cannot make it interactive. It's only going to draw it on the screen. So we have to introduce two methods that are the kind of two core methods within uh, processing. And one, one method is the setup, and it looks like this. 
and the other one is the draw. And this introduces a few core concepts which can be hard to grasp in the beginning, but when you see it more and more you start realizing what it actually does. So this one means there's a scope between these two um, uh, brackets here, curly brackets, and uh, this scope is called setup. And there's another scope here between these two brackets that's called draw. And you can see here when you push, put the mouse cursor on top of it, you can see that you have the relationship between them. So this one is related to that one, and this one is related to this one. So this is two scopes, and they have two different functions within this system. This uh, scope here is uh, the setup scope is only run once. That means when you start the program, it does whatever it ne is needed for the system to set up. And it's obvious, or it's a good thing, a logical step to say, all right, the screen size is something I want to set up when we start the program, but it's not something I want to change uh, for every frame. And the draw, on the other hand, is, uh, uh, is running for every frame. So this is like a film strip that runs all the time. And it basically what it does is that it goes into draw. It's, when you start the program, it starts in setup. And the first thing it does is to define the size. And then when it's done with that and says, okay, nothing more to do here, it jumps down to draw and goes in and say, oh, I need to set the background to zero. That means clear screen. It clears the screen to zero. And then I want to draw an ellipse. That's step number two. And when it's done with that, it kind of restarts and just makes a new frame here. So it's always running around in a circle like this. In this case, it doesn't do anything else right now, but this enables us to start playing around with the, with the different parameters. So for an example, there's a, a kind of a hidden variable you can, you can get access to, which is the mouse position. So the position of my mouse, and that's mouse X for the x-coordinate and mouse y for the y-coordinate. And when I use that, you, the ball will start following my mouse around here. So right now we have done something that is the first kind of level of interactivity. Something is moving around, it's not a static image, and every frame it draws the, the, the circle exactly where, my posi where I'm positioned, in the, where my mouse is positioned. And here, be aware that the background has an important role. If I move it, then, then you can see here that it will draw a lot of circles because it never clean, clears the screen. So every, for every frame, it will draw a circle at my mouse position. And I get this kind of snake kind of uh, illusion. So it's important to have background zero. Also, the, the order is very important. So the first thing I do for each frame is to clear the background and draw the ellipse. If I do it the other way around, then this is a common mistake. And then when you run the program, you're like frustrated because your, your ellipse is not there and you're wondering why. And the reason for this is very simple. First, you're drawing the ellipse and then you're clearing the whole screen, basically. And also, this is kind of confusing. For some reason, they call it background when it's actually a clear screen command. So you could kind of have the illusion that somehow it's able to clear the background even though you draw the ellipse, but it's actually a clear screen. It wipes it clean. It's like a whiteboard. You are, you're drawing on a whiteboard right now, and you've drawn a circle, and then you're taking the eraser, and you kind of clean, cleaned up the whole whiteboard, which makes no sense. So let's move it here. All right, so to make this like a pong game where the ball is actually moving around, we have to figure out how do we get the ball to move on its own. Because right now, the ball is not moving, it's moving with, with the mouse, but that's that we need to do that with the paddle, basically, right? So, moving the ball around, how do we do that? Well, what we need to introduce is actually some variables some, uh, that can change. So, if I write a, a constant here, a fixed number, let's write 100, 100 then I cannot really change it as we go live. Like it, it's right there, yes, and I can go in and I can change it and it moves a little bit. But it's kind of frustrating to sit here and manually move it like this step by step for every program. And then, you know, you could make a time lapse this way, but you couldn't really make a real interactive program. So to change these variables as a flow, as a, with the frame rate, we need to introduce variables and there's different kinds and the one I want to use for now is a float 
it's a decimal number. So I'm using the type float um, and I'm calling it pos x oops pos x equals and then I give it a starting position and the question is where should it start? It should actually start in the middle so the width is 800 so that should be 400 and then we have the pos y and that should be 300. So if we start it now, no, nothing happens. And the reason for uh, this is not related yet is that we only defined it up here, but we're not using the, the va actual values down here. So let's copy paste the post X, put it in here, and the post Y. And then when we start the program now, you can see that it's actually positioned in the middle. So if I change this number to something else, like 100, it will actually mean the same thing as if I put 100 in here. But what is amazing now is I can start changing the numbers as we go. That means I can, can modify them. I can say, all right, in setup, I can say, all right, I want this one to have a value 10. And then when I started, it will actually overwrite the starting position and say, all right, it's actually here. And I can start to do math. So the question is, how do we get to get this ball to move uh, in a kind of to the right, uh, move this direction here? How do we get it to move? Well. Actually, this is just to move the position one pixel at the time, so plus one all the way over here. And since this is looping around the drawer, we can add it in here. We can add it in top. That's kind of nice. Then it's a lot. There's logic. So I say pos x position x equals position x plus one. So when I do this, what will happen is that the ball will start to move. To the right. So right now, now we have a moving ball that has its own personality and, and is moving in a kind of in a direction. As you can see, it will run outside the screen and start moving way beyond the screen as well. Uh, so the question is, how? What is happening here? What kind of magic is this? And what you have to understand is this equal sign is not the same way as you are used to in math. What this means is, take what is on this side and put it into the, push, the variable post x. So what happens is that it takes the value of post x, which is 400, and it says 400 plus 1, and then it takes that is 401, and it adds that to po it puts that into post x. So post x becomes 401. And since this is looping around like this all the time, it will always uh, it will slowly add one uh, plus one for each frame it draws on the screen. So it will say, all right, the first time it runs through, it will be like, okay, pos x is 400 plus 1, that's 401. I will add that, and then it will change this in memory, so it says 401. And then we'll move on, do, 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 and jump up again. And then next time it comes around here, this number will be 401. So it will be 401 plus 1, which is 402. And then we will change that up here to 402, and we'll go around and around and around like this uh, all the time. And that is what makes it move. All right, so, so far so good. We are closer to making the game of Pong, but we have still quite a lot of details missing here. First of all, it's moving in that direction, but then, you know, it's supposed to bounce, or at least when the bat is there, it's supposed to bounce. We need some bouncing thing going on here at least. So how do you get it to bounce? Well, bouncing is actually changing direction. So, I mean, we can change the direction manually, by just saying minus one, and that will fix uh, fix that. It will go in the other direction. But then we have the problem over here that it will end up here and just run outside the screen. So it doesn't it doesn't bounce back and forth. So we need to change this here. But that's a constant again. The same problem as here with ellipse. So how do we solve that? Well, we need to make one more variable here or two more. So we need a direction for x, and let's put it to one and a direction for y and put it to one. So, and that could also be speed, that depends on how you kind of your terminology. You have to be aware that these variables is just something I make up on the fly here. It's not uh, fixed. So I could call this hooko, and then I just have to make sure to call every place I use this variable for hooko. It wouldn't make sense, it wouldn't be a logical way to... Uh, to uh, to call it, so it's it's more logical, at least for me, to call it post x. So that's why I'm calling it that. But just be aware that this is just a name, a container we define, and we can call it whatever we want to. 
So now we have four variables up here. We have a pos x and a pos y and a d or y x and a d or y. So if I give the, add this one instead of this one and say plus dx, the ball will start moving to the right, like this. And if I change this one to minus one instead of one, it will move to the other in the other direction because then it says po pos x plus minus one, which is minus, and it will go in this direction. So now we can start making rules. We can change the direction on the fly. And the way we do that is by introducing if statements. So here we, we are actually opening up for the interactive part. Until now it had been a very deterministic program. It's just a ball moving and we just keep on moving. But as soon as we add an if statement, we can start kind of making more kind of interactive element, elements to it. So one thing we could say is if pos x is bigger than the width of the screen, and that is in small, like that. We want to do that. And then suddenly you can see here that the scope system is actually nested. So this is one scope around the draw. And then we have another scope here with the curly braces here that defines the, uh, the if statement, that, that encapsulates the if statement. So this is a part of this. And it introduces another dimension that quite often you need to use a semicolon in the end of your command, that means stop end of the, the command structure. In this case, never ever put it here and you're going to do it like 200 times until you learn it because it, it's so hard to understand. But there's no semicolon here because this is a part of the if statements. So if you did this, it's like cutting the head off the body, like this is now no longer connected to this. And we want them to be connected because we want everything that is within this scope only to ex be executed if this is true. So in this case, I might say, um, yeah, I might say just, uh, yeah, maybe well, let's start here and see if that works. So if the position becomes bigger than width, and we can do a debug here, and that is a nice detail to know. You can say print line, and then you can just say uh, hip something. You can write whatever you want to. Uh, and what it does is it gives you a, like a little, it prints the text here that you're printing. So you can see here that as soon as this one comes all the way out to the width, in the middle, it says hip, 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 because the ball is now bigger. The position of the ball is now bigger than the width of the screen. So that means that now we have something that only executes when the ball is outside here. And the way we do that is then to say dx is uh, equal to minus one. We turn it around. And it might work or we might have to say equal to, we'll see, it worked. So right now we have a situation where it bounces on, this, on the axis, only on the x-axis. We haven't done anything with the y-axis right now. So right now it's just bouncing like that. And then it goes to the other side and it goes outside. Okay, we haven't solved this one yet. So what is the rule for this one? Which if statement should we use to connect here? And this is, in this case, pos x is less than zero. So we write the same same kind of logic, now it's just less than and it's zero. And then we say stop in there, and then we say dx equals one. So now we are starting to have a bouncing ball that bounces back and forth. And right now it's kind of slow to debug because it's such a wide field so we're gonna I'm gonna make the playing area just a tad smaller to make it easier for us to debug and then we need to change the starting position so uh, this one should be if it should be in the middle it should be 150 and 100 so now the ball is quite big for the playing field but it's easier to see what's going on now all right, so now we need to get the other axis going as well, so we get a bouncing ball. And the way to do that is to do exactly what we have done here. This is for ball x or for the x-axis, and then we need to do the same thing for the y-axis for the ball. So let's write a comment here saying x-axis uh, ball 
And uh, these two means it's a comment, so this is just for us to remember. And then we copy paste this like this and say y axis. Oh, no, I forgot a lot of things. So right now it's moving, but we don't check anything here. We need to change all the axes. So this is a very a good example of, if you copy paste code like this, you need to be quite disciplined of uh, making sure that you uh, also change the names and the variables and, uh, as needed. So, what are you saying? Oh, the width, yeah. I get a little bit of help from my friends watching over my shoulder here. So I forgot a height here and changed the height as well. So now we have a ball bouncing around. I mean, it's it's bouncing bouncing from the center and not bouncing from uh, from the edge. So uh, we need to compensate for the the radius of the the size of the ball. It's not a huge deal so far because this is just a simple kind of introduction to programming. Um, but uh, we can play around with it a little bit later, maybe. So one of the things is to add a bat because there is some scenarios here like you lose a point or you get a point or something like that depending on you know what is going on here and um, I want to add a bat I think that's the next fun thing to do so adding a bat in this little game here I'm gonna make the ball a little bit smaller because it's so huge with the new layout here like that yeah that's more nice. All right, so um, let's create a bat. So uh, all right, bat. Is that how you spell bat? Bat? Yes. Um, and a bat again. Programming doesn't know the concept of a bat. That's where that's where you come in. That's where you are intelligent human beings have to sit down and say, okay, what is the essence of a bat? And the essence of a bat. Is a rectangle so we're gonna use rect and it has some parameters it has the position so let's say we want to draw it here so the width uh, let's say maybe zero will work and then we uh, how big should the bat be I don't know 10 uh, no um, how far down should it be first so the next one is the y-axis uh, yeah let's do 20 and then say the thickness of the bat is 10 and the height should be, I don't know, 30. I'm just kind of playing around with the numbers here. I don't, I'm not sure. Let's see how big it is. And it's not even on the screen. Is that because, why is it not on the screen? What did I do? Oh, I did the mistake I was telling you guys about. So the problem is here that background is too far down here. So background is actually, I'm drawing the bat and then I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, clearing the screen with the background thing. So let's put background all the way up to the top here because it's a bastard and it just needs to stay on top because else you're gonna run into that problem constantly while you're programming. Oh, so now we have a bat. It's a kind of tiny bat. So the height should be a little bit more, but not too much. So that's more like it. So we have a bat. And we want, let's say we want to use the mouse as kind of the controller for this bat. So I want to be able to go up and down here. And uh, we already knew that we have mouse X and mouse Y. And we don't want the bat to move in this direction. So I don't want to move it around on the screen, just up and down. And that's the Y direction. So um, I can change the, the Y direction to mouse Y. And then we have a kind of a bat that I can move around. So something is starting to kind of become interactive and I can start playing. The, the game of Pong is appearing slowly in this uh, little example here. Um, it's not really doing anything. Like I, There's no kind of interactivity between the ball and the bat. So the question is, how do we get the bat to kind of bounce or the ball to bounce on the bat. So there's a scenario where we die or we lose points and there's a scenario where we um, where we need to uh, where we need to bounce the ball. So first off we need to see if it's actually hitting the bat. So is it on top of the bat or is it actually outside the bat? So this is one scenario is like this. This is when it's on top of the bat like that. And the other scenario is that it's not on top, like the bat is outside like this, and it's just hitting the wall behind it. 
So this requires us to kind of wrap our heads around and kind of do the math and see what is actually the scenario and the situation here. So um, first of all, we need to do it where the x position is colliding with zero. So this one here is where that's the that's the x axis zero. So this is the kind of the axis here, and we need to say when that happens, when the ball here collides with the with the zero, that's when we need to check it. And uh, we can make then an if statement inside an if statement. That might be the way to do it here and say, so we have the uh, uh, we have the y direction uh, of the of the bat. That is how high or the ball, how high it is. So here, how high is the ball? And then we can compare that to the position of the bat. So if the position of the ball is bigger than, and what is the position of the bat then? What is it that defines the position of the bat? In the y direction, it's actually the mouse y, we have it here. So actually, if, if the position is, uh, is uh, bigger than the uh, mouse uh, y, that means the ball is below, below the mouse cursor here. So now we have like two scenarios, either it's hitting the bat or the ball is just below the bat. And, and the other rule we need is then to make sure that it is within the bat. So we need to kind of go in two directions at once and then we have the slice in the middle which is the actual bat. So we do this and then we say if post y is bigger than mouse y is smaller than mouse y plus the height of the bat, and the height of the bat is 60. And I may have missed something, is this correct? We'll see, I will test it. And then I'll write O code, that means you, 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 we kind of, we hit the bat, hit the bat, and bat hit, is better. Let's see if it's correct, or if I missed something. Yeah, looked kind of correct. So now we need to test all the scenarios. One is hitting the bat, one is that it's below the bat, or above the bat, it's easier to do above now. So nothing got hit, there's no kind of a thing going on down in the terminal, we're not getting anything there. And then below, yeah. So we have a situation now where we know when it hits the bat. So now we can make a choice, what is gonna happen when it hits the bat and when it doesn't hit the bat. So we can make an else fun example here. So look how the scopes in this program is evolving and that's how we raise the complexity. If the ball is hitting the left side of the, of the screen, we want to check if it's within the bat or it's above or below the bat. And notice how I'm starting to to make comments in my code. And this is really, really important for you to understand what is actually going on, because one thing is sitting with it and you understand exactly what you're doing, and then take a coffee break and afterwards it's just gonna be this big mess of commands and it's completely impossible for you to figure out what's actually going on. So let's add a bad mist command here. Mm -hmm. And let's double check that I got the math right and everything is okay. So, bad missed, that is completely correct. And, uh, bad hit, yeah. And then we need the lower one as well, below the bad, to make sure everything is correct. Bad missed. All right, so these down here prove to me that I'm onto something. This is actually becoming Pong. Uh, so now we need to make some rules. What is going to happen in these scenarios? Well, in one scenario when we hit the bat, we might want the ball to actually, uh, actually um, uh, bounce. So in that scenario, we want to change the direction. So the direction that we usually used to have here, we move down here in the bat hit scenario. 
In the other scenario, I wanted to actually when it, you get out when we don't hit when we miss the bat, I want the ball to get into the middle and we kind of start over. It. We, we kind of you know it's a new serve basically. So we say post x equals uh, width divided by two. That's the middle of the screen and post y divided by height uh, uh, equal height divided by two. So this returns the the ball to uh, to the kind of initial position here. So let's see what happens. Yes, we bounce on the bat. And let's see again. And it jumps into the middle. So right now we kind of have a proof of concept of something actually working. And we kind of evolve our code from a very simple concept of a ball to a bat to, no, to moving around to a bat to bouncing a bat. And then we can go on from here to here. Like we can make an artificial intelligence play on the other side. We can make points. We can make a high score. We can make everything else. But this is kind of the core kind of design concept of making a, a punk game. Then we're gonna add um, we're gonna add a high score. That's easy. So a high score is just some counter that adds a, a, a point when you kind of when you uh, do the right thing and you maybe lose a point every time you do the wrong thing. Let's say that's the high score we're working with here. So I can do that by simply um, uh, by simply uh, making a, a counter up here. And since the score is never gonna be a decimal number, actually we, now we're gonna use the 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 integer because it's 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 not going to be a decimal number and and it's going to be confusing later on if you use a decimal number for it so we say score and we say zero and then the first thing we can do in the program is actually just to print out the score somewhere so uh, let's do it as the last thing so it's always on top and we say text and i don't know the syntax for this so i'm kind of guessing here i don't know if it's is it the position first or is it let's see yeah, it looks right. So uh, we need to move it down a little bit. So in and in and down. So 10, 10. Let's see if we get a number somewhere. So now there should be a score somewhere. I don't see it. Oh yeah, we need to also make sure that it's actually um, uh, right now. It's 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 black on black. So it's black text on black background. So we need to make to fill it out with a white background, and that's two five five. And then we need to remember to go back to black fillings because else we can get in trouble with the ball, which expect. No, that's also, that's interesting. Is it stroke? No, I'm just confused here. Or well, maybe it's just not further not down enough. What's going on here? Can you see it? I think text is text, comma x, comma y. Oh, it's the other way around? That would explain it anyway. Let's see. So, let's see it here. Text. Ah, yeah. So the syntax is opposite, that's why it's complaining. It's not the fill part that's the problem. Uh, actually, that wouldn't even make sense because we are... Yeah, so now we have a score. And the height should be a little bit further down, so we give it like a 20. And now we have a score up here, updating all the time. But the score needs to be added, so we need to kind of give it points and stuff like that. So we could say, uh, let's have a point every time we, we get the bat and lose a point every time we miss a bat. So that's easy, that's bat missed, we lose a point. So we say score equals score minus one. And in the case of uh, we actually hitting correctly, we say score equals score plus one. Mm, minus one, I'm losing here. Oh no. Let's get a score. All right, I'm kind of saving some of the points here. And so forth. Um, I think this is a good place to round off now, and then, oh man, that's... No, you have to do the, the automatic intelligence part. You want to, the, uh, the AI? Yeah, you said you do it, and I have to do it. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, okay, okay. So, I mean, 
The problem with computers is it's actually insanely easy to make an opponent that is playing perfectly because the computer knows all the data, so it's really easy for the to make that. So let's say, but that, let's start with that. Let's say we're gonna make an opponent that always never fails, so you can basically never win over it. So let's start there. And the simple way to do that is actually to say opponent. So this is an automatic opponent, and that is another bad. So we need to uh, rect, and we need the same rect that we use for the bad for the for the what do you call it for the um, player, yeah. So, but what what position? If, if I use mouse Y, we have a situation here. Oh, it has to be on the other side as well. So, it's uh, the width should be uh, width minus the width of the bat. So this is um, this is the width of the screen minus the width of the bat, which is ten. And then we have here. Now we have like a synchronized dance going on where there's two bats in both ends, uh, all controlled by the mouse. So that's not so interesting. But if we, instead of using mouse Y, use the ball position with a little bit of a, a little bit of trickery, we say minus and the height of the, the bat is 30, something like that, and then run it. Let's see what's going on now. So now we have the illusion of actually having a game. The only problem here is that actually this one over here is never going to be wrong. It's going to be spot in the middle, dead right every time. So it's it's kind of we need to dumb the computer down somehow. We need it to make make the computer less intelligent about moving the bat, and we need to move the bat slower than this or something like that. And there's a million ways to do this. Um, one way to do it is actually to um to uh, to uh, there's a, like a nifty trick I can show you here but you can also do it with if statements and stuff so you say float and then you say opponent uh, y axis equals uh, zero and then you say this is the kind of the position of the y bat or the opponent bat on the y axis so instead of saying the ball's position we actually uh, we need to copy this out because I need it later, so I'm just gonna put it here, and then we take this one, and then uh, if we just, so now we just have a variable here we can play around with, so if we just do this, we actually have the same situation as before, um, that the bat is moving uh, completely after the ball, so it's always dead center. But now we can damper that so the decision is not as quick. And there's multiple ways to do that. We could, we could actually make like we do it here, say if the bat is above the ball, or if the ball is above the bat, the bat should move up, and if it's below, it should move down and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm gonna do a quick and dirty here because we're running out of time. So we're gonna use a running average, which is kind of fun to play with and can also add some few things to it, but also kind of hard to grasp. But basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want the position of the ball, I want 1% of the position of the ball to be added to 1% or, or, or to 99% of the opponent's position, of the bat's current position. And that should kind of damper it a little bit. And if 1% is too much, you kind of change it until you get the right uh, uh, amount. So now it should actually moving. See, now it's not hitting straight in the corner. It's kind of moving a little bit slowly. And this will then greatly depends on the ball, how the ball approaches the, the bat, where it hits it. So we can make it even slower and say 1,000 uh, instead of 100. Uh, and then it will be really, really slow bad. It will really be a slow moving bad, maybe too slow. So here, here you can kind of tweak the numbers until you get the, the right number. And also one dimension in, in this that is, I haven't gone through here is that it will also be relevant to change the angle of the ball. Right now we, are only, we only have like this 40, uh, 45 degree angle kind of thing going on here. Um, but that is for definitely for another round. Uh, and what I would kind of advise you to do now with this game here is to, for first of all, there's lots of tweaks that needs to be done. The ball is still, you know, it kind of bounces uh, 
outside the screen a little bit. There's um, uh, there's the angle thing. There's something with points that they both should have points and uh, so forth. Um, and they're all small optimizations you can do. And what actually is interesting here is that this code here, as it is right now, is actually can be optimized greatly. So you can actually play around with the code and optimize greatly by these two can be combined because they're only changing direction. You could make uh, classes and objects and all kinds of stuff, uh, stuff on top of this. So this should just be considered kind of the basic template to play around with it. And the advice is to keep on programming this in different ways and find different approaches. Approaches, You know, this maybe might be better with an actual angle, so you have degrees in it, stuff like that. And in that sense, you can optimize the game to, to have all the kind of nitty-gritty qualities that the Pong has in the, in the real one.